emphasis. Actually, when I stepped into this place, I was really so encouraged at the fervency of prayer and how much more our heart is open to receive from God. But nonetheless, I don't want the intensity to go down. I just want us to be more focused because, to be sincere, a lot of people here are not praying. It's not because I want to brag, but if if you will sacrifice your birth and come to the church at such a time as this, then it's not convenient. So you already know that it's not convenient. You already know that it's not a place to enjoy yourself. So you must dissatisfy yourself for that moment, for that time, to engage God. Because it's only God that you come here to see. I don't think whether you come here to see my ugly face or the beautiful face of Islam. So if you are actually come here to see God, which cannot be found within a routine or within a cultural cycle, then you must begin to restructure your pattern on how to engage God. I want us to set our heart away to pray again. Because you see, a lot of us have not been coached in this aspect. And a lot of us are babes in it. And we have made it. But I'm telling you, the patterns of prayers and the efficiency and your efficacy in prayer is not tied upon your strength or your will to do or your ability. It's tied upon the strength of the ability of the Holy Ghost inside of you. And it will be wise of you to actually know that you cannot pray on your own. It will be wise of you to know that the best you can do is just to speak language that do not carry potency. Because you can talk like that and the devils will deal with you day and night. But the ability to pray and to gain stature, to gain ranking, the ability to pray and to touch heaven and to assess into the heart of God, where God will begin to reveal to you things that pertain to your life and destiny, for you to be able to pray sufficiently like that, you must neglect yourself, die to yourself, and hold on to the Holy Spirit. It is only Him that can help you in times of your infirmities. It is only him that can help you in places where you are insufficient of yourself. So with that, I want to call your attention. Knowing fully well that prayer was never supposed and designed to be a mechanical activity. It was supposed to be a spiritual exercise where which your strength is guided and guided upon the leaning upon a spirit, a personality that was given as a gift. If you don't understand that actually, you struggle as a believer. And you'll be powerless. And I assure you, there is nothing as much as frustrated as being a Christian that is powerless. There's nothing as frustrated as running a routine, really dumb, as usual. I always tell my friends that if Christianity is all about coming to church on Sunday, then I quit. Because I tell you, the Muslim will tell you that you must pass for 30 days within a season. How many believers actually pass at least once in a month? So you see, it's not enough for you to say that you've been attacked by demons. Neither is it enough for you to say that certain things are holding you down. If you must not understand that Christianity is actually, it was passed down as a religion of controversy. As a religion that has been challenged all through creation, all through generation. Then you must not understand that you are actually in the warfare. Because your living and your sustenance alone itself is a warfare. I'm saying all this so that I want you to really understand that you have to give up yourself now. Let's pray by the Holy Spirit. Pray, praying by the Holy Spirit does not necessitate that you actually pray in tongues. So that let it not be as though all of us are spooky. Do you understand? Far beyond tongues, there are people that walk deep things in God that do not actually speak in tongues. But you will not deny the fact that they pray in spirit and in truth. The Bible speaking said that time is going to come, which is now when everyone must have to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Then you must ask yourself, are you praying in spirit and in truth? Are you worshiping in spirit and in truth? Prayer is supposed to be a heart posture. Prayer is supposed to be a positioning of the heart. 
Prayer actually means pursuing, bringing out the world inside of you. Putting your heart into war, sending it to a being and a creature that lives above here. A creature that creates you, knowing the intent and the design pattern of what you are expected to function. Then you restructure your life around. Because normally as human beings, we do make mistakes in life. That mistake that we do make truncate our lives, truncate the destiny that God has planned for us. But prayer is what to restructure you and align your life. Then if you must pray in spirit and in truth, then you must know that you must pray the intent of God. That means it's something that you must have to engage your heart. I want us to lay down ourselves. Then permit the Holy Spirit to pray to us. Let your heart mean what you are saying. Let your spirit mean what you are saying. You have a spirit inside of you. Forget about the fact, Holy Spirit for now. The fact that you are gathered here at this time means that Holy you, you, you love God, that's why you are here. Then, let that your love and your passion for God generate and try to you to that place where you can pray in spirit and in truth. Engage your heart in this prayer. Let the Lord know that you really mean this prayer. Because only God knows what is in your heart. And only Him can answer your prayers. You see, prayer is supposed to be the, the first thing that people do. But sometimes it seems to be the last thing people do. It's when people are laden with infirmities, people are laden with sicknesses and things that you now hold on to God. But you are supposed to always be praying. Because the Bible speaking said that this, this parable was spoken that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means if you are always, always praying, then you will not faint. A time came Paul said that I thank God that I pray more than all of you, that I speak in talk more than all of you. Why is he boasting in that? He's boasting in the ability of God to strengthen and to keep. I'm telling you, if you don't pray, you will be powerless. And devil will deal with you so bad. If you can burn in the place of prayer, you will not die in the battlefield. Can you set your heart? Four hours is too small for us to have 24. But I'm telling you, if witches and wizards can spend time every day to go for meetings, why can't we spend time all the time praying? And you think that just because they make a decree and they make a verdict and put your name you think you can just come and speak bala bala and take away your name from that food? You will die beggarly. I do not really blame why people do die like that. I'm telling you simply because they have not born in the place of God. Devil was never designed to kill you. Devil was never supposed to be an issue. If devil kill you, you submitted your will and you permitted it to do like that. I challenge every witch and wizard, wherever they dwell. If they know the pathway to power, all the of power came from God. And if you can press it to God and assess that dimension of power, a witch. Even the devil himself can bow. If you go long enough in the journey of this, you discover that even the king can beg. The best among the weak doctor has an end. The Bible speaking say a time came the apostle came into a land and they did a lot of things and even sorcerers gave their life to Christ. Many witch doctors they submitted their amulets. What I'm trying to tell you is that there is a realm in God where you assess power and authority, where which you will not become beggarly as a Christian. And that realm can be assessed only in the place of prayer. You don't come here to come and sleep. This is the place where you engage yourself. Jesus said, Peter, Peter, can't you just wait for me at least for an hour? Because the time and the moment when you feel like sleeping, we are actually the time where the devil intended to tempt you down. That is actually the time where the devil intended to cut you down. But I'm telling you, if you can stay awake at those times and challenge the devil, contend with him at the gate, he will not take your life. And certain sicknesses and diseases that trouble human beings, they are nothing, but they are just as a result of the manifestations of demonic spirit. If you can go high in God and strengthen yourself in God, those things will not be an issue. I want us to call unto the God of heaven, he that dwells in Zion. Let him come and help us. None of us here is perfect, and none of us, the best among us here, need help. Because the greatest inheritance that you can ever receive in the kingdom of God is for you to be poor in heart and broken and contrite in spirit. Be insufficient in, in yourself, knowing fully well that only God can help you. That is the strength of a man. The best among the apostles, the best, even Jesus himself. A time came, he cried as a man, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatanai. At that time, they saw the display of his humanity. They saw the display of his flesh, not knowing, the, nah, knowing, not knowing all that. His weaknesses was actually his strength because they would not really understand that him giving up the ghost was permitting a spirit that would come and inhabit him. And that was what gave right for that resurrection, the resurrection spirit of God which became his mortal body and permitting him to live again.
Paul said, I will not let you to be ignorant. I will pass through a lot of things. For we are pressed beyond measure. And all these things happen so that we trust not in ourselves, but in God that can raise the dead. I want you to believe that people don't die in the place of prayer. So don't think you are weak. You are not weak. Just vow. Make a, make, make a demand from God. Make a covenant with God that you will press and you will contend. That which is an issue. That which you are asking him and seeking him for. You must persist and insist for anything to happen. The house of God is always supposed to be a place of prayer. Doesn't it amaze you how people can do everything, but if they say, let's pray, look at the people that have come to pray. If they say, we should come here and share money, you know how people will gather. But you know, you can collect money and in the next five minutes you will die. But you cannot come up from such a place of prayer, strengthened and equipped by God, and just go back and die like that. People do everything in life and they neglect God, thinking that things will work out good. I tell you, I have served the devil a while, and I tell you, the devil is a bad master. Don't ever permit the devil to rule over you. Go against him and contend against him. And if you go long enough in this, you will discover that the devil cannot hold you bound for so long. I want us to pray. And ask the Lord that let the yokes, the bondages, and the sentences of death that is upon our lives, let them go. Because I see tentacles. You might not believe it. That's the problem. But I see there are certain people that have been sentenced for death. It's also is. I see certain people that have been contending with darkness in their dreams. I see people that, people that you have been attacked several times. You see, this attack was supposed to lead you to the place of weakness. After the place of weakness, the place to quit, the place to quit, the place to give up, the place to give up, the place to give up, the ghost. But I'm telling you, if you contend with the devil, that you can be broken. There are certain yokes and bondages that have that, that have refused to leave us although we give our life to Christ. But I'm telling you, if you can burn so well in the place of prayer, those things will die. Nothing whole fire. If you put this thing in fire for so long, it will burn. If you put an iron in fire for so long, it will melt. There is nothing that can hold fire. Bam. The Bible speaking says he makes his angels wings, but he makes his ministers a flame of fire. I want to assure unto you, if you can just but set yourself on fire. At least for a while, all those all those clutches of darkness upon your life, they will die down. Certain disappointment that you've been getting in life is simply because there are a lot of hands that are manipulating you. They might come from the village. Whether you like it or not, our grandparents have idols. I know you will speak in tongues now. I know you will love Jesus Christ now. But I'm telling you, if you go back some generation ago, our grandparents have idols. And according to causes and blessings in Deuteronomy, the Bible speaks that these causes and these blessings will go to you for four generations. If you can't fall generation, you know how long is the generation? Can't fall generation backwards. If your grandfather sat an idol, your name was Lisa to you because our grandfathers were so wise. When they want to submit to the devil, they submit with their family, with their unborn children. Your name was written there. And I tell you, if you must succeed and go far in life, you must break away from certain chains that you know nothing about. And that's why if you want to, if you want to ascend onto greatness in life, it's as though certain things are holding you bound. It's as though certain things are resisting you. Is simply an idol that will still live here that is trying to hold you. And it is not your fault, it's the fault of an ancient grandfather that you might not even know his name. A time came, I was so angry. I went to my village and the place they buried my grandfather and the place they buried his grandfather. I put one of my legs here, one here, and I start crossing them because they need to sleep. I used to see them in my gym coming to torment me, so when I see them coming to attack me, then I also see some ancient old women coming to disturb me at dream at night. And sometimes I see them like snake, I see them like cat, I see them like dog. And I ask myself, where I call it down? And I realize that these are demonic spirit, ancient spirit that refuse to rest although they die. And the Lord tells me, Philip, if you don't rise and pray, it will not take too long before you die. Because when you start telling your, when you start making contacts with demons and darkness, it will take long before the spirit of infirmity attacks you. And when the spirit of infirmity comes upon you, you will be diagnosed of all kinds of sickness overnight. And before you know it, you are weak and you are dead, you are gone. I want you to know that if you must take your name away from every cause and cactus of darkness, there must be a contention. Devil doesn't give up without a fight. I'm telling you. And the only way to fight the devil is through prayer. Prayer has been given unto us as a weapon to engage forces upon the face of the earth. Worship is a weapon to engage heaven to come to the earth. 
But if you must contend upon the face of the earth, you need to pray and pray and pray again. Because that is the only return that has been given unto you to contend the affairs and the plans of that earth. A man that doesn't pray die like a chicken. I don't want to die like a chicken. So it is time for you to awake and begin to pray. I assure you, that if you begin to pray, those dreams and those encounters that you used to have, it will not take too long that you begin to dream and see yourself content in him. Some of us hear a dream and you see dead people coming up to you. What do you think this is? They are trying to call you to where they belong because that is where they want you to belong. But I'm telling you, the dead can't praise the Lord. It's the living that will praise the Lord. Understand that you have a covenant with God that I will not die but need to proclaim the kingdom of the Lord. But I assure you, if you don't pray, if you don't pray, your days are numbered. Never trivialize the life of a man of prayer. Any man that prays, never trivialize his life. The Bible speaking said that the believers, the apostles, they were put in jail. The Bible said that they prayed and they sang. God did something. The Bible said time came that they, they contended with them and tell us that they should not preach in the name of Jesus. They came and they said, should we obey God or should we obey man? And the Bible said in the book of Acts 4 that they gathered together again. And he prayed and he put Pharaoh to God. And the Bible says, at night an angel was slain and he struck Pharaoh dead. Let me tell you, the man that prayed, whatever that is an invitation will be put down low, except if you don't pray and engage your heart effectively. It doesn't matter even though you are a sinner. It doesn't matter even though if you are sinned. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination to God. But when you are coming to God with the heart of repentance, your prayer is never an abomination. God will open his heart to hear you and he will call you into that hell. I want you to engage God. I want you to engage God. Never be tired of your situation. One thing that the devil always do is to make you to be weary. He always bring you to a point where you discredit God and say, Are you not tired of all this? But the best the devil can do is to discourage you. The Bible said that the vision will come to pass. Although you tell it, it will definitely come to pass. Can we engage heaven? I want us to pray. I want us to actually pray. And ask the Lord that any one of us here that is here, that there is still a hold of darkness in his life, let the Lord break through that. Let the Lord with his mighty arm break through that. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire.
And the demands of God are always high. And that's why God is not a man. And we should not lie that it's easy to assess God. No. God is not a man. But God knows fully well the frailty of mankind. He has made a system where which men can be able to assess him. And for God, for somebody to be able to assess God, the first thing that must happen unto you is that. The Spirit of God has to do it inside of you. And that will result to the manifestation of the anointing. The standard of God are high, so He, he designed a structure where which He will anoint, people, will anoint mere men, mortal men. Then there will be a career of His presence, a career of His Spirit. Then from thence, they will now have the ability to assess Him and to relate with Him. So somehow, spiritual activity will be hard for you. It will be, it will be important to you sometimes if you don't really have the spirit of God and if you have not been able to assess the spirit of God. But I want you to know that this is not really something that is really big. Paul was speaking in the book of First Corinthians 12. He said that I will not have you ignorant. I know you were Gentiles carried away onto this dumb idol, even as you were there. But I speak unto you to know that nobody speaking by the spirit called Jesus and cause. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the spirit is of him. Then he moved further to begin to speak about the diversity of spirit, diversity of gifts, diversity of ministry, and diversity of administration. But the major emphasis was that nobody speaking by the spirit called that Jesus a cause. And nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the spirit inside of him. So what Paul was trying to make them to understand was simply that they will not really have the ability to say that Jesus is Lord in their life, except that the Holy Spirit prompted it upon them to believe that there is a God that exists. Then when they have believed that they cannot actually effectually cross God, why now? Because they have the Spirit inside of them. 
An unbeliever out there can insult Jesus. But you, you have a witness within you that won't permit you to insult Jesus. That witness inside of you is the Spirit of God that is bearing witness to you that you are actually the Son of God. Having the adoption and the seal of the promise of the Father. But you must also realize that far beyond just him bearing witness in your spirit, he has other resources and other abilities and other things that he's supposed to do for you. Jesus speaking said that except I go, he will not come. And when he comes, he will guide me forward to you. And he's speaking about the Holy Spirit saying that when he comes, he will take that which belongs to me and he will give it unto you. So Jesus Christ somehow came upon the face of the earth and paid a price for the dividends of that which you will receive in the person of the Holy Spirit. So as a believer, if you have not yet begun to associate with the Holy Spirit, come to a point where you begin to relate with Him expressly. He has certain resources and certain investment and inheritance in God, which dwell in the personality of the Holy Spirit that you cannot be able to assess. And if you cannot assess that, you cannot go in the anointing. It becomes too hard for someone to effectually function and work with God without the anointing. I consider it impossible for you to function with God and work with God accurately without the anointing of God. Because God is not a man. And everything changed in a man's life the day he becomes anointed. Nonetheless, this pathway to the anointing is a path that is destroyed by many. But few people still dare to walk upon it. And the few people that dare to walk upon it, God separate them, put them upon the mountain hill, put them upon the top tower, and he command the world to hear them. And those people look like superstars to you, but no, they just were men needing help from God that God teams. People that are terrible like Paul, that God encounter on his road to Damascus, then anoint them with his spirit, then grant unto them the ability to represent him. So a man that is common, a man, common man like fishermen, a time is going to come when they will be induced with power and they can be able to represent God with boldness and power, simply because they were common men that were infused by God. And this thing was not an explicit preserve for all the people that love Jesus. You read the book of Acts 10, you discover there was a man that was spoken about called Cornelius. Cornelius was never really a Jewish person. He was a soldier that belongs to an Italian band. The Bible said that man's duty was just to give arms. But it's well when the time came, the book of remembrance was open. There are many people that are good in doing good. But good is not good enough if it brings no salvation to you. Because that will take do good. That will take give philanthropy. Most rich people, they do philanthropy. Does that mean that they are doing the things of the kingdom? No. They can still go to hell. So, the good enough is not really enough. Somehow, the Cornelius was doing good, but the time came that the book of Memphis had to be open so that you partake of the inhabitants of that with the Jewish house. And the Bible said, an angel encountered him and was asked that he should send for Peter. That was a Joppa. And a Joppa, we saw a scenario that also happened. A woman named Tabitha Dockers. That woman attitude was the attitude of giving. The time came that she died, and the people that she had been doing good to gathered together and said, This woman will not die. And as a result of the testimony and the witness of that which the good that that woman did, the Bible said that Peter was saying to come bring her back to life. And she came back to life. From thence, the Lord sent him to go meet Cornelius. Meeting Cornelius immediately when he came to the... As of that time, it was a sin for you as a Jew to be found in the house of a Gentile. But when he came to the house of Cornelius, he did not even know what to say. He began to share his encounter and how God showed him this, this in the vision and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And the Gentiles partake of that which was the inheritance of the Jews. I want you to know that there is a heritage in God for you, and that dwells in the anointing. Because the Bible speaks it shall come to pass when the yoke shall be lifted away from your shoulder as a result of the anointing. There are certain things in your life that will never break until the day you begin to feel the spirits, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's from practical experience. There are a lot of things in your life that will not move until you begin to push them. They will become ease the day that the anointing begins to rest upon you. Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed with the devil. If God, if Jesus Christ who is God, needed to be anointed by God, who do you think you are? That you don't need to be anointed by God. Jesus Christ was still God, but he needed to be baptized and be ordained and be begotten and to be adopted again and confirmed by the Holy Spirit as being the Son of God to go in prison. And in time came over to the book of Isaiah and said that this day is scripture is fulfilling your height, for the Spirit of God is upon me, he has anointed me for this cause. The Holy Spirit is the personality which is very important in heaven and on earth. But power is power is is power is that which a tool which we need 
to combat the forces of darkness upon the face of the earth. So you need to be anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power upon the face of the earth. You must survive these days and the darkness that is before you. I want us to cry unto God to release His power and His anointing upon us. This is just a prayer that we just in a short while. Let us ask the Lord to release His power and His anointing upon us. You see, ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and the door will open. Seek and you shall find. You see, if we who are evil know how to give good gift to our children, how much more God would He not give the gift of the Holy Spirit to as many as them that ask of Him? I don't know what you want from God, but you need to make a demand. You need to ask. Sometimes people say, Don't God know that I need this? No. There are too many people in the face of the earth, and God will pursue all of them. <laughs> Remember Him. Remember Him. The Bible says, Present your case with proof. You must remember him a lot of time. Can we ask the Lord? Let him endow us with strength, with ability, with his anointing, with his power, so that that which limits others in our family will not limit you. If there is a limit that we place that we won't go above this today, let the limit place. As a result of the power and the anointing that will come upon us. It might happen swiftly, but let it be that you make this demand from God. The Bible speaks saying the people shall be willing the days of thy power and through the greatness of thy power will the enemy submit themselves. No one see power and doesn't power. It's a lie. And we ask the Lord and say, Oh God, stretch out your hand towards us and release your spirit, your spirit, your spirit, your spirit, and your anointing upon us. Let it make ease the things that have been according to us. Let the anointing break yokes upon our lives. Let it break chains. Let it break yokes. Let it break chains. Break yokes. Break chains. Zubahaluna. In poitu. Ubabala. Tushke breika. Babala. Tunama. Kusaba. Rababala. Tunda breika. Babala. Ke. Ubala. Tana. Shababala. Tunama. Ske. Breika. Babala. Tababola. Tababola. Tena. Tunda. Balawala. We make a demand upon the anointing of the spirit. Father. Oh God. Let your anointing rest upon us. Let it rest upon us. Let your power rest upon us. Let it contend against the darkness that is that seek to swallow us. Let your anointing rest upon us. Take us away from the malignity. Who babela who barani adu malata? Jababa la nu sabreka who babani na nu babala tuata. Let the anointing take away the limit that the devil has set for us. Let it take away the limit that has been put in our life. Let the anointing let it break the yoke. Let it break the yoke. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Kapopa. Ebadena so babela na kuta ita pakwada na tashkaba. Eskapabela na tula ragi la mahuta. Ega babala na tapabela tula brei kapapana tashkabo. Maga babala na tule kapapo na tashkabo. Tashkabala tula tapabena tashkaba. Ebabala tula babala tula brei kapapo na tapapana tashkaba. Tapabela na tuske tima. Aga babela sababe. Maga tu babala tula tapapana tashkabo de la matuske da. Tapabala na na tula te tapapana tashkaba. Oh Lord, anoint me with fresh oil. Anoint me with a new fire. Anoint me with a fresh baptism of your power. And with your spirit that I may contend against the raging darkness that seeks to swallow me. Rabagona Shababedana. Agamba Tosta Babedana Mabutaba. Gamba Desaba. Gamba Badatuna Babana Shababeda Tabaratuna Menaskova. Bada Babana Sobabeda Tula Babeda Muda Menaka. Agamba Nasha Babeda Tuania. Erna Pato Sekida. Erna Manantoni Babona Nama Panabaska Baboa. Manaba Balana Stabeda Babana Tunama. Akamba Nasha Babona Tabapana Babatoa. Erna Babana Nama Puta Babana Suba. Ebada Nanto Babana Soa. Let your hand wait upon me. Let your hand wait upon me, O Lord. Makatu Bela Nashoba. Eskaba Bela Nanto Neka Babapana Balatea. Nababala Nababapana Balashu Nababala Tuna Dababona Shaba. I have come to the end of myself, O Lord. Take over, take over. Take me to the places where I cannot take myself. Or take me to the places where I cannot take myself. Open doors for me in the adoration. Create opportunities for me in the name of Jesus. Kababeda na sobi kaman. Agabada tuna ba kabada na tuna tabeda tuna ba. Eba banasho ba ita ba kula ba la ta. Babeda su ba ita babeda ta. Eka babuna sho ba ita babala tuna mama sho ta. Iba mu se da kamata. Jesus name we pray. We will meet in the.
Oh, 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 oh,